following your sure welcome again to the rock this seventh day night so friday night tomorrow night we're gonna have a live stream at 6 44 p.m central standard time and it's gonna be you know last week we talked about the sisters and keep what i said this week we're talking about the brothers we talked about matriarchy and this stream is gonna be on israel brotherhood the great come up scheme because that's what it seems like today. The great come up. Brotherhood. I don't know if y'all watched the, uh, the video HOQ did. I posted it on my Facebook, oh, my Facebook, my YouTube. Uh, I uh, linked it. So if you go to my channel, you should be able to see it. But the great come up scheme. That's what a lot of this faith is turning into. That's why I love the brothers that I roll with. I want to be with men that are going to make me better. I want to be with men that don't that 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 make me better by their example. I want to be around men that work their butt off. I don't want to be the great come up scheme, or nor am I using my brethren as the great come up scheme. But in this faith today, there are men that are willing to use other brothers in a drop of a dime, in a second. They want to use other men's. They want to get out there and immediately use your tools and use your resources. And they want to become your brother because they want to land themselves some more vagina. They want more pussy. So they want to line on themselves up with somebody that may give them the opportunity to land another wife. Unthankful people, unholy people, they're just looking for the come up. People that love this, oh, I want the all things in common, and guess what? Everybody's going to move on the property, and I'm going to be the leader, and everybody's going to listen to what I say, and, and it's going to go the way I want it to go. And then when people don't want to do it, you say, well, that's because people don't want real brotherhood. No, people don't want to be bamboozled. Brotherhood. Not complainers, not whiners, not people who say, hey... You know, I relocated. Let's fellowship. Cool. But here's the thing. Here's the thing I want people to understand. I really want you to get this. You see, I work hard. The sisters work hard. Six days a week, anywhere between 8 to 12 to 13 hours a day. We work hard. So when a Shabbat comes, when it's a day of rest, sometimes fellowship is hard. Because when you've worked Six days and have busted your ass for six days. That seventh day, you want to sleep in. You want to rest. You may want to spend that time with your family, having a family study. Which I love doing. Studying, spending that time with their children, studying with them, teaching them, spending time with, you know, uh, uh, your Isha or Ishas because they may have questions. You want to answer them. But instead, brethren get so angry because they think that it's supposed to be what they came out of, which is every Shabbat, we're going to be here, we're going to fellowship, I get to sit in your face, it's just going to be us just sitting there. But listen, I'm tired. And it's hard to stay awake sometimes in those fellowships because I work my ass off for six days. Now, for some people, you may not understand that. But when you are your own tractor, when you're moving logs, when you have to deal, I don't know if y'all can see that, with that, daily and you're moving this daily you're cutting back your increasing gardens which may mean you have to move soil sort of from one side of your land to the other side of your land you're removing rocks planting trees building you are tired and i don't have the energy to just sit there and study scriptures i need to sleep at that moment because I may have gone that week getting three and four hours of sleep a day. I didn't have the luxury of sleeping eight hours like you did while you say you're homesteading. But nothing on your land's getting done. But now you're offended because you want a fellowship. Or you're offended because you get invited to Tabernacles and get mad because the tabernacles was on another brother's land and that brother doesn't know you but he was gracious enough to invite you and you're upset because there, you, you don't get to pull out your firearm and have target practice at tabernacles you're upset 
because you want to be included in the, 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 the mag, the mutual assistance group. But nobody knows you. And you're offended because somebody says, we want to see fruit in you first. Before we engage in letting you know our plans and what we're doing and, and how we're going to do it, we want to see some fruit in you first. And the fruit that we're looking at is not very good because you're not doing anything right now and you get offended. How about being grateful? How about being thankful? How about leaving that brother in a better state? As HOQ said, this is how we roll brothers, me, HOQ, and Brother David. If I go to one of their lands or they come here, they leave me in a better state when they leave than when they got here. That's one of the rules that we roll with as brethren. That's a brotherhood. If I go to Brother David's land, I'm going to pick up trash. I'm going to do some remedial. And Brother David didn't ask us to do anything for him. But he's still HOQ who got there early to help Brother David. Myself, who before I left, I wanted to make sure that the brother's land was together. And yet, he had to deal with cleaning up bags of trash. Just left. How was that brotherhood? When he has to clean up your shit. Because you couldn't put the trash where everybody else's trash goes. See, I'm going there because Israel is not a come up scheme. It's a brotherhood. Or supposed to be. So we're going to talk about that. I'm sure people may be offended. That's why I roll with a very few select people. Because so many people are full of this come up scheme, this, this great, you know, um, uh, uh, churchanity 12.0, where you just have to like me and we're brothers because, you know, I know you and, and, and people are unthankful, they're ungrateful for what you've taught them, for what you're doing to help them because they didn't get from you what they want to get from you. The great come up. And I know there are people out there that give this impression that it's the great cause. This is why I understand why, in many ways, not, not, this is not an excuse, sisters, but I understand, as HQ was saying, why a lot of sisters are very apprehensive, because I'm, I'm very apprehensive as a brother. I'm very apprehensive now as a brother, because you, see, you start to see some, some, some things in people where if things don't go the way they want it to go, because, you know, they had an agenda when they, come, when, they, when they fellowship. They have an agenda when they call you brother. And usually, that agenda is, how can I come up off of you? How can I come up off of you? I don't mind helping. And I know many brothers, many of y'all out there, don't mind helping somebody. But you're not going to be used as their come-up scheme. Israel is not a come-up scheme. The faith, brotherhood, when it's true brotherhood, it's not a come-up scheme. We help each other because we love each other. Not because we're going to come up off one another. In the back of your mind, you have it set. Well, I'm just going to come up off this brother. I feel lonely, so therefore, you know, uh, I get to meet my loneliness by just being around this person. And he has to sacrifice everything that he's doing or what he's doing or what he's doing for me. So that I can feel good about myself. Come-up scheme. It's not what this is. It's the faith. So we're going to discuss this. The great come up scheme. And again, there may be some hurt feelings. What I'm going to ask you is this. Were, are you using others as a come up scheme? You see, for myself, for the brothers I, I love the role with, the brothers that I call beloved brothers, we all, are, we all were doing this before we knew each other. All of us. Before I knew HRQ and Brother David, I was homesteading here. HRQ was homesteading. Brother David was homesteading. And the Most High, y'all led us together as brothers. He did all the work. The Most High did all the work. And sure, again, we don't mind helping. But damn it, I've been re seriously reevaluating re -evaluating brotherhood. As HOQ said in his video, really seriously be, been reevaluating brotherhood. What it means. What do you bring to the table as a brother? Outside of scriptures, 
prayers, and bullshit. You got to have more than that. You got to have more than that. So we're going to discuss this in depth. This seventh day night. And it is, it is the hope. It really truly is the hope. That for one of you out there who may be in that sort of brotherhood relationship where people are just, they just tend to be piggybacking off you. You can realize you don't have to be somebody else's wheelbarrow. Your job is not to, ju to, to just take on the burdens of everybody else. You should ask the question, what do they bring? Otherwise, you may find yourself never being able to achieve the things that you want to achieve because you're always helping somebody else achieve what they want to achieve. And they have no problem using you to do it. Hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow. Again, 6.44 Central Standard Time. Those that have the ears to hear, let them hear. Shalom.